everyone to this week's episode of Booking the Territory, the unprofessional wrestling podcast. And today, we're talking NWA Saturday night on TBS from May the 20th of 1989. And boy, we got a hell of an episode coming if we're talking about the review portion, that is, because this was some good stuff, pal. Let me tell you off the top. I'm sitting here with Doc, and of course, Harper's not here yet because, well, he is the superstar, but he's never on time. So I'll throw it to Doc. Doc, how are you as we wait for Harper? I'm getting hotter and hotter by the second. That's... We're doing this er- we're doing this early so that the superstar, you know, hey, bah, 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 let's go early. Oh, we're like, hell yeah. We're here early. Now what? Um, you know, we are yeah. we are about we are about to eulogize one of the greats in this sport. And it would really, really help us out if we had all three people in the booth. I'm telling yeah. you, I'm getting I'm getting a little salty with this guy. <laughs> I don't think people realize he runs you know, on his own schedule. You know, the Sopranos, they're all friends until they're not. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, no, it might be no. it might be time. You you want to tell the people um Real quick, I'm going to say this, and I want to give the special shout-out to our largest page contributors monthly, disrespectfully, Classy, Marky Blassie, Kyle Riley, Mike Childers, Joe Ice. Thank you for your generous support each and every month. You want to tell the people something you were telling me earlier today? You were like, bruh, whenever the red light's not on, he won't stop talking. But as soon as okay. the red light turns on, he he just is like... What was it? What was it? Was it last week or two weeks ago? I, I was like, all right, Harper, here's Heard. So when he comes back, cut a promo on him, and he goes, He's not good. No, that's not what happened, but I know what you're talking about. He said, like I said, all right, we're going to go to Jim Hurd now. And Harper's like, oh, mother fricka, I got something to say about this. And then the minute the promo's over, I go, Harper, all right, let's cut the promo. He's like, he's not good. That's it? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Bro, you never know what you're going to get with him. (laughs) <laughs> That's right. People don't understand that you don't. This is not planned. We have to work real hard to manufacture. The, I mean, he's a volume shooter in the NBA terms. We, you got to continue to feed him so that eventually he gets hot. It's not a given. Never is. Speaking of speaking of, oh, uh, he's on. green. He's green. What? Hold on. What? Well, while you're getting him on, how about those Dallas Cowboys? Everybody, uh, by the time this comes out, we'll be one and one. Uh, by the time this comes out, we will have uh, whipped Kenny Byersdorf and his "Let's Be Great" nonsense. Uh, we'll be two and one after we beat the Seahawks. There you go, buddy. The only reason y'all have a chance at beating Seattle in Seattle is because the crowd won't be there. That's right. That's 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 what's going on with that. But Where I'm not here. Go? I'm not here to talk about football. Matter of fact, never heard of football. Well, Hopper, how are you, man? I fucking know what I heard. Uh oh. What did you hear? I heard Lance and Silver are starting a a new new book in the Terry podcast. A book in the trip. what? You heard what? What? They're starting a new, new book in the territory podcast. Is that oh, true? I know what he. Who's starting a new, new book in the territory podcast? Lance and Silva. However, I don't know if our audience is getting what you're saying. You might have to explain it because I don't a lot of our a it. lot of our audience does not does shit. not watch modern wrestling. <laughs> I ain't explaining it shit. I don't know either. So whatever. Wow. Okay. Let me explain for the people out there. Evidently, um, Joey Janela and is it Sonny Kisshopper? Yes. They are calling themselves the new, new Midnight Express. And it's basically a dig. It's a dig at Corny because Corny's been ripping on them. It's it's really dumb. And it's 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 petty. It's kind of (laughs) funny. It's stupid. And it won't work. But so why the, do it? Why not? Marks me yourself. Why not? Wrestling's dead anyway. That's true, huh? Well, and, we and and yeah. Doc is already after thirty seconds of talking about it, 
is tired of talking modern Jesus wrestling, right, Doc? Yeah. I'm half right. drunk anyway. Fuck it. Me, oh. me too. I started I started drinking about four o'clock today. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so this ought to this ought to be awesome, Mike. Good luck. I'm full of fireballs and Bud Light. Jesus wow. Christ. You're, that fireball shit is like mouthwash. No, yeah. it's not bad. I mean, it's better than doing fucking Jägermeister. I used to no, do that it's shit. Oh shit. Jaeger is delicious. Jaeger what do you shit, de- Mike? What what <laughs> did you say what do I shoot? Yeah. And you said <laughs> That's fucked up. You gotta oh, edit man. that out. You gotta edit it out. <laughs> people don't did you say that. Did you say what do I shoot? Yeah. But besides <laughs> he meant from a libations perspective. You gotta take that out. You got to. You must. He, not, he does not want that in the show. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, I got no problem taking that out. Actually, I'm not, I don't want to leave that in. To be honest, yeah. Um, don't. yeah well, that's, that's, uh, I, so well, well, well let me answer do... the question. Let me answer the question. What, what do you shoot? Heroin. I don't really shoot Speed, anything speedballs. besides. Uh, I drink Hennessy, but I don't really shoot anything. Like, taking shots is... I don't know. When was the last time you fucking took a shot of anything? I'll I'll put it to you like this. When you were younger... Oh, yeah. What what did you shoot? Oh, hell, you put put, put damn near anything in front of me. I'd probably take a shot of it. I mean, come on. You know how it is when you're young and growing up in New Orleans. We were just... Just just nice, man. They stopped that shit. It's not just New Orleans. Young people like to get fucked up everywhere. And we were all garbage. We were all garbage disposals, just putting anything you could get in. It is true. Honest to God, can y'all imagine? I mean, we're all about the same age within a couple of years. Can y'all imagine if we had cell phones at the age of 22? Like, I would have shoved one up some girl's asshole. Stop. Can you imagine? I am so glad that during my most immature years, there is not video evidence of my stupidity. Of anything. I mean, outside of bouncing around in a ring. Yeah, I saw you next to that Brass Nuts trophy. That was pretty cool. I'm talking just in a bar, in a club, in some of the dumb stuff that we did back then. (laughs) Go ahead, Hopper. You know what popped into my head? Do you remember when you were telling, saying that you wish you would have had a cell phone back then to take a picture of that rat in the fucking rat trap? We weren't talking about that. We we were talking about an actual rat at a grocery store I used to go to, like a physical, like big rat. Um, Go ahead, Hopper. Yes. Not not an actual female wrestling rat. I was driving around work, and this was like right after Katrina when everything was a fucking construction site. And I was in New Orleans East, and someone took a teddy bear, and they put a fucking strap-on dildo on it, <laughs> and they put it on a fucking fence. And I'm, I'm thinking, damn, why do I got this shitty cell phone without a camera on? I was like, I got to take a picture of this. <laughs> What's wrong with people, man? Because it's when people were, like, gutting the houses, and they were just, fuck it. And these fucking uh, these fucking work crews were just throwing all this shit out. And I guess someone had a fucking strap on dildo with a th- oh, bro. Look at this shit. <laughs> and they fucking put it on a teddy bear and they put it on a fucking fence. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I wish the fuck I didn't have the bottom of the barrel flip phone. At least I could have the one with the fucking camera on it. I would still take a picture of this. Have we ever considered the fact that the aliens are afraid to come here because they're afraid to catch what we have? Yeah. Dude, I know exactly what had to happen. They were gutting out all those homes. Right. Mm -hmm. And somebody's in this house gutting the house, cleaning it out. Because, I mean, literally everything, you know, including the walls and insulation is being taken out of these homes. 
So so they're like going, you know, just piling. You got to remember, New Orleans looked like a, a war zone at the time from all the like stuff on the curb of every single house that was being cleaned out. So some some dumb poor dude is is doing work in the house, a crew, and they find a dildo and a, a strap on, and they're like, yeah, they're like, you know what? I've been aware. You know what'd be cool if we hang this teddy bear on a fence. And strap the dildo onto it, and everybody that drives by is gonna. Yeah, yeah. that's what they thought. Yeah, <laughs> that's nice. That's real classy of those guys. I know, huh? Hey, so right. should we get should we get serious for a second here and eulogize a Hall of Famer? Please do. Well, I just I do I wanted to make sure all the teddy bear strap on dildo bullshit was over. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we do. We have, yeah. We need a transition to something more serious. All right. We lost. A, we lost. We lost the animal today, bro. Yeah. 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 I was. I was, uh, I was, I was working. It, was, it and, wasn't uh, real. You know the guy Darren that we talk about. I saw him. He's he does a job similar to mine, and I run into him all the time. And I go to I go to rush him, take a shit. For now, you play. On your phone, I'm seeing fucking an animal pops up. What the fuck? And I was like, holy shit. And he's like stalking shit. I was like, hey, you want to hear some bad news? Fucking animal just died. Oh, come on, Harper. Why are you going to joke like that, man? Come and he on. looked, he's like, no fucking, oh shit. I just listened to him on a podcast. It's like, yeah, he must have just fucking died. As of right now, there's no details on it. We don't know what happened. I guess he had he a was, heart attack, huh? That's what I'm thinking, because he was 60. Yeah. Bro, I'm, here's the problem, man. I'm closer to 60 than I am 30. Yeah, no, dude. That's the same thing that popped into my fucking head. I got to stop eating Vienna sausages. <laughs> Come on. We can't even eulogize yeah. Animal without you. Did you, did you see, did Jake the Snake post some dirty shit on Twitter? Like, he's the last member of the Legion of Doom or something? Oh, Jesus. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen that. He but. he did outlive. He was he was an original member of the Legion of Doom, and he outlived those two. It just sucks that like I've gotten used to seeing my heroes die now. I I'm with you, Hopper. It's it's um becoming normal. I mean, we've lost Kamala, yeah. Bullet Bob. I mean, we've this is this Har- we Harper, get older, and I don't I don't think you Harper heard this, but. There was one show, and I don't remember exactly which one it was, but it was Mike and I and Bobby. And we were asking Bobby, like, you know, hey, like everybody in this match but you is dead. You know, like a six-man tag or some shit. And Brian Hildebrand and Smokey. And he actually said, he's like, I, I've actually got, you know, there's times when I have survivor guilt. Damn. Like, why, yeah. did I, why, did I, why did I live? That was a match where it was Gordy versus him and... God, I don't remember who his tag team partner was, but he was deceased. And then, I, and then Brian Hildebrand, Mark Curtis was the ref. He was deceased. Who was Gordy's tag partner in that? I can't remember. I don't remember. But it was very weird. Like Bobby was the only one still living. It was the craziest thing. And and he said that. And you're right, Doc. I'm really c- much closer to sixty than I am to thirty. So it's weird when you start seeing guys. That's the other part yeah. of it too. Because yeah. we look at those guys like they were so much older than us, but then the older you get, you're like, damn, that dude not that much older than us. You know, 15, 16 years right. ain't nothing. Right, because when you're like fucking nine years old, 25 might as well be 40. Right. Here's the other thing, and this is sad too. The Road Warriors combined only lived 106 years. Damn, Jesus. that's fucking horrible. God. So those I'm gonna have indestructible, to... those indestructible, just couldn't be hurt, immovable force, r- bum rush the ring. But man, in real life, those guys live fit, on average fifty three years each. Yeah, I saw when someone shared the the picture from the Survivor Series with the Road Warriors, with the Ultimate Warrior, and and Kerry Von Erich. They're the team being interviewed by fucking Mean Gene, and it's just everyone in this picture is fucking dead. Holy and I was like, and I was like, Jesus Christ, they're right. And it doesn't seem that long ago either. That's the yeah. other part. 
Um, I'm gonna have to Six. edit this out of okay, the so. YouTube. I was gonna say I'm gonna edit this out of the YouTube version, so uh, because of, because of what's gonna play because of the music. But oh. I'm gonna play something for y'all. I, I found this right before we were recording. I didn't have a lot of time to put anything together, but I found this right before, and I figured one more time for old time's sake. Uh, let's uh, let's watch the real world. Listen to the real world music as they come out to defeat Mac and Jim Jeffers. I believe this is from 1986, uh, maybe 87, but uh, or maybe 85. Here, here it is. Actually, 85. Now that I think about it, here it is. As we await the entrance now of the Road Warrior. Tell me that don't get your blood boiling, bro. This is fucking. That don't <laughs> exist anymore. <laughs> None of this exists anymore. None of this, bro. All gone. Uh, tell me that doesn't. Bastard. Tell me that does not get you excited. Oh God. Them coming down the aisle is just somebody's about to get their ass handed to them. Bro, that's, that's like what... feeding a, a, a fucking puppy to a goddamn lion. <laughs> Jesus, it's true. Look Dude, at this that's... shit. That's one of those old Crockett buildings when we first mm-hmm. started doing our Saturday nights that they would go to and the crowd would be into it. I mean, look at everybody standing, bruh, it, Hawk military press, this guy over his head flips him. And they wouldn't even do anything. This is wrestling, bruh. They do three fucking moves. Now they, like, come to, now they gotta come down some overly lit, overly produced runway. With some overly dumbass generic rock song to let everybody know they're coming. They have a ten minute match. Have a uh, well, in a ten minute conversation before they have a ten minute match. Half of which is outside the ring doing stupid shit that doesn't get them over. Uh, yeah, Pop fuck it. that. Power I slam. To wrestle these assholes. <laughs> <laughs> but we get a we get a power slam. Big elbow drop. You know, fist to the head, big boot. That's it. Yeah. Now, Mac and Jim Jeffers used to work with them a, a good deal. Oh, really? Um, okay. Yeah, that's um, but the still, power, I mean, the, the mod squad, right? Yeah, that's the mod squad actually too. Before they were the mod squad, but anyway, I I found this like right before, and I was like, I gotta play this tonight, and it's just. Like I said, it's the old like we talked about it years ago. The old smoke filled building. You know, they're in the old Crockett town. Real Wars come out, beat the piss out of them. And, but the biggest the thing where, was... It was a place where grannies and rats and young kids could all mingle in one place, all trying to get something different out of the wrestling. But the big thing was Iron Man hitting. You hear the music, and it just Somebody makes... is catching <laughs> a whooping. Somebody's yes, catching great, a whooping. Man. That's it. No, it's all. It's simple too, you know. They got the makeup on, the black mm. tights. But anyway, um, I'll I'll try to post a link to the actual this actual video in the in the description of the show. But this is good stuff, pal. So on that note, um, I guess Hawk and Animal had a reunion today, and R.I.P. Animal, you will be missed. Uh, thank you for the memories in the ring. All right, Doc. There's no easy way to move forward. How about we? Uh, how about we move along? Hey, um, so I was out uh, out running some errands today, and I heard overheard some people talking at the grocery store about a new way to become a year long patron of BTT. Um, what do you got oh. for me? Well, I'm glad you said that because I announced it on Patreon last week or a week and a half ago. But yes. <laughs> Everybody, uh, hold on. Hold on but let me just skip in real quick and say the first Dogaholic Spotlight of the week is going to Mike Walker because I believe he was the first one to take advantage of this brand new exciting offer. Please, Mike, tell them about the offer. Yeah, Mike signed up. He's uh, we had some existing patrons move over to the annual membership, but Michael Walker was the first new patron to sign up for the annual membership. And here's the thing I've been getting questions for. The whole time we've been on Patreon for a good two plus years now, because we moved over in I think July of 2018, and everybody's like, "Well, can I get any? Can I can I pay for the year? Can I pay for the year?" Finally, you can pay for one full year in advance. And the best part about signing up for a full year is you get 10% off, meaning that you're basically getting a month for free. So, 
It's a great way to not only support the show, but you get a discount in return, plus all of the great stuff that is on Patreon, including the live streams, the world-class shows, the Clash of the Champions, the pay-per-views we do. All of that is over on Patreon, the ECW shows. So there you go. You save 10% when you sign up for the full year. Uh, we did have a, a bunch of people move over to the annual that are existing, so they took advantage of that 10% savings. Basically what happens is, if you're month to month right now and you move over, you, if you sign up today, uh, which is October 1st, you won't be billed again until October 1st of 2021. You just pay well, for the good. full year in advance. It's, a, it's, and, it's and, really and good. And everybody here knows there's nothing good about going month to month with anything in your life. Yeah, and like I said, you, you save 10%. Need, you need to lock that down. Lock it down. And as I say lock it down, I want to thank the Patreon members who moved over to annual. Thank Michael Walker for becoming a new Patreon member and the first quote-unquote annual member. That's a new member. And then I want to thank a couple of other people. Chris Zaha, my tremendous friend on Facebook and a great member of the Filthy BTT Army. Uh, he bumped up his pledge last week, but I forgot to mention it. So there you go, Chris. Thank you very much. Uh, stay safe, brah. And then Brian Hanna, uh, before I did the annual, he made he became a new patron. So thanks, Brian. And Brian said one show per week just wasn't cutting it. So he signed up for all the extras. So there you go. Thanks, Brian. We appreciate you signing up. Doc, I believe you've got some spotlights. Before I throw it to you, though, tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT is how you can take advantage of our Patreon. Again, it's tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. Doc, you got some uh, either spotlights or five-star reviews. I know we had I got a, one five-star for sure. Shut up. I got a five-star review. Um, I do want to say back to that Patreon deal. Hey, man, there's a lot of, there's a lot of podcasts out there. I ain't going to name any names, but, you know, they may not be around in a year. What's that I supposed bet, to mean? How many podcasts come and go? That's true, huh? I used to love J.J. Dillon's. Oh, yeah. That was a great nap time affair. <laughs> That's nice. As much as we love J.J., if you needed to cure insomnia, just put that in your ears. These workers want to have their podcast and realize there ain't no easy money in it, and all of a sudden it's like, well, I don't want to do that. But after five years, never missing a week, I, I think we're a pretty safe bet. Anyway, I do have a five-star review. This one came in from, hold on one second as I pull this some bitch up. Oh, God, I can't even see it. My old ass eyes. John J. Bush. Bush. Excellence in broadcasting. I've listened to these guys for years, and they never cease to amaze me with their knowledge. I look forward to the show every week. Keep up the great work. Thank you, John. We appreciate that. And he has been a very, very long time listener. He's been with the show. I, I remember John from a long time ago. So way back when I you agree. were terrible at this. Oh yeah. Back when you were the shits too. But actually you still are the shits, now that I think about it. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Well, thank you. No problem. No problem. Hey, I got I gotta tell you. I'm pretty excited about this. This episode was some grade A beyond wrestling content. Yeah, it was 40 minutes. Hopper, you're texting me. It's the Road Warriors versus Mac and Jim Jeffries. <laughs> Harper got distracted. Yeah. I'll message I'll I'll message you um All right. message to you later that way you don't forget. Jesus um Christ. <laughs> uh all right. So Doc, you were leading into it. Uh, we're talking what is it, May twentieth of nineteen eighty nine, Saturday night on TBS. I got the video version of this thing going now. Uh what were you saying about this uh about this week's episode? You you were starting to say something. Man, there's a lot of good stuff in this episode. We got a lot to talk about. Um, this episode was tremendous. Yeah, tremendous. I got some. Harper, did you? Got, Harper, did you watch it? Yeah. Well, they said it was an hour long, but it was forty minutes. So I, I want to know what happened in those other twenty fucking minutes. Well, you got commercials. Not twenty minutes worth. Uh, let me see, Harper. I can answer that question for you because I believe I got the original of this. 
so um uh, yeah this they clipped riveting. they clipped about three minutes from it but i have no clue what it is oh without, that's it without looking yeah i mean that would make sense you got commercials and all kind of other bull crap for the other 15 i think back I mean, in the i think back in the day it used to be 12 minutes for an hour yeah but then you but then you also had like um ads like um they would do the scrolling thing where they you know span slam they still do that they, i've i've looked at some of the originals and from the footage i have and there there's it's on there so um they you got that in it so i i i want to say you know they did cut something i would have to look at it to see exactly what it is though they cut about 3 minutes from it whatever that is all right so we get into the show. Uh, JR opens the show and tells us we should be what we should be seeing this week, and then we head to um, almost head to head to the ring. But uh, JR also tells us that Flair is out of the hospital and is healing from his home, and then we head to the ring. Uh, don't look for Flair for a while though. He's he's healing, but he ain't gonna be on TV for a while. And then we head to the ring uh, to see Secret Service Jack Victory, one of Hopper's favorite wrestlers, versus Sting for the uh, NWA World TV title. Before we go to that, Doc, what did you have from the opening? If anything? Not much. I'm going to tell you this. Jack Victory needs to lose some weight. Looks like a fucking Ghostbuster. Who are you going to call, Hopper? Jack Victory. Da -da. <laughs> That's what he's this wearing. Is, One of the, those, those this... fucking Ghostbusters coveralls. Yeah, I think this will be the first time, and mark it down, that I'm going to say the the right guy won. The right right guy being who, Doc? Uh, the Stinger. Wow, you you free? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to call it like it is. It's just you know, I'm not gonna pander to all this Sting bullshit. <laughs> pander. <laughs> I like that he won with the crossbody. Yeah, he didn't win with the with the death uh, scorpion deathlock. Yeah, it's to show you that you know he could win other ways. Mm -hmm. I don't understand Doc's hatred for Jack Victory. I mean, he was kind of a 1985 a a big deal in in Dallas and world class, but now all of a sudden you hate he him. he looks like he is super fat here. That's nice. Yeah. Could be the get up. It's the outfit. I keep telling you that. You don't sing the Ghostbuster song though, because it sounds too much like Huey Lewis. I want a new drug, and we'll get sued. <laughs> That's a real sing thing. Mike. Do the uh, yeah. okay. Um, do the uh, we got a request this week, Hopper, for some more uh, what? Gomer pop. What we more go Gomer we're supposed to read some shit? <laughs> no, <laughs> go. I don't want you to read that. <laughs> you see how salty he got, Doc? <laughs> you want to read some Come shit? On. Uh, you hadn't done Gomer Pyle in a while. It's in, it, well, you've been missing Gomer Pyle. You haven't done hey, the Iron you know, Sheik either. No, I'm right. not doing Sheik. I'm not doing Sheik. Y'all are killing me. I think I think what? I think this is a work with Iron Sheik. I really do. Why don't you sing Chattahoochee in a Gomer Pyle voice? <laughs> yeah, remember that song? Where it on one? How'd it go? I was hoping you knew. Sing it, Doc. I don't know. <laughs> sing it. I did the Elvira. Boom, bop, a doom, bop, a doom, bop, the mo, mo. All right. That's really. Wait, I want. How'd it go? Is it way down? the wrong one. Is it way down yonder in the Chattahoochee? Way down yonder at the Chattahoochee. It gets hotter than the Hoochie Coochie. Yeah, remember that, Mike? No, I don't. No, no, I can't say that. That was on the B side of, of Bone Thugs and Harmony. No, I don't. <laughs> now, now, now you're full of both. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, sure. Sure you are. Sure you are. Guy. <laughs> All right. Um, So, Secret Service Jack to Victory loses to Sting, who's the NWA World TV Champion. Gary Hart and Sting. Um, Well, let's just go to the audio right now of, of, of Sting. Whoa, hold on, and hold on, Gary. hold on. Go back. At the end Go of the match, to... did you see Tommy Young point out the camera for Sting? Let's see. Yeah. Oh, right yeah, there. right there. Yeah. Hey, over here, asshole. <laughs> nice, Doc. 
<laughs> Why are you? You forget that Sting is still very young in the business. Now let's go to the audio now. I thought you were going to say Sting. I want listening. you to know something. What you did there with Jack Victory, that is not the great Muta. And when you get in the ring with the great Muta and the Dragon Shy, it's going to be different. You know, I'm sick of this. Why don't you just bring the great Muta in right now? He's, he's very impatient. He's not going to beat me. I challenged the man to a Dragon Shy match. The Dragon Shy stick is in here. It hasn't been signed. We'll wait until the time is right. No, no, You'll no, get you see, I've been talking to my dude out there in Japan. He's smarting the stinger up. I don't want to wait. I'm ready right now. Where's the great Muta? me. He's not going to bait me into something. I'm going to tell you something, Stinger. The Muda will come to you when the time is ready. And if you were smart, you wouldn't be calling his name here on national television because he's right in the back now. And you don't want no part of Muda. What do you mean when the time is ready? What's wrong with right now? I got goosebumps. I'm excited. I think they're excited. <laughs> The Stinger doesn't want to wait. Hart trying to restrain the great Muta here. Muta wants a piece of the Stinger. The Stinger feels likewise, but the wily veteran Gary Hart is not going to allow this altercation to take place. All right, so they teased a little altercation between Sting and Muta. I think that's how you're supposed to do it. You're not supposed to let them make contact. Because um, they'll do that eventually when they get in the ring together. And uh, that was my note. Doc, your thoughts on uh, your buddy Sting right here? I would pay $1,000 right now to see Muda miss Sting. You know, you should get over your irrational hatred for Sting. I've said this before. Steve Borden seems like a really good dude. It's everybody else propping Sting up that ruined my WCW. So that's what I'm talking about. That's what ruined it? Yep. Does Al Perez come back? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at Gary Hart, and, and I realize he just has uh, one guy now. When he had Abdullah. He has Cowboy Bob Orton, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, that's true. But he had Abdullah, Perez... That was really random. I'm just saying. I just looking at Gary Hart. I'm thinking, wait, what the fuck? Maybe Al Perez is in the AWA with Larry Zabisco. <laughs> Zabisco, ding. Remember those commercials? Yes. Yeah. All I remember is not when, right when Al Perez was getting ready to leave. Doc was getting mad at him for trying to talk, and Gary Hart was talking. And Doc said, shut up, Mexican. And that got a good pop from the Facebook group, as Doc was being <laughs> racist as he always is. That's fucked I, up. I love everybody. I'm sure you do. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, I love... I'm not protecting you when the race war breaks out. I keep telling you that. You can... Oh, yes, you are. And... <laughs> you know, all I gotta say is... You get a little Latina, hot little Latina. Mm. Mm. That's a nice stock. Okay. Uh, Harper, you got any other thoughts on Gary Hart, Sting, and Muda right there? I mean, it's just good stuff. Yeah, they did a little tease. Yeah, I'm all interested. Sprayed the mist. Yeah. Little tease, little tease. That's all you need. Okay. Well, let's go to Eddie Gilbert right here. Mm. Here we see what he's got to say. Welcome back, fans, to World Championship Wrestling, Jim Ross and Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. We're going to be taking a look at a piece of videotape regarding the uh, therapy for Rick Steiner. His arm is, is convalescing. He's getting better, but Eddie in Nashville I, took his toll. I, since we're talking about Nashville, Tennessee, we're talking about injuries. If I can have everybody's attention just a minute, everyone at home. I've come out here many times, and me and you both have talked about Ric Flair. If the champ is watching at home... 
I just want you to know, I can't wait till you get back here and shut Terry Funk's mouth. Now let's talk about another Rick. Let's talk about Rick Steiner. That's right, Jim. His bicep was torn at the hands of Kevin Sullivan, Danny Spivey, the varsity club. Well, Sullivan, I want you to know, you're a yellow egg-sucking dog, boy, and you got your day on Steiner, but he'll be back, and he's going to get well, and you've got to tell the tape. Now let's go ahead and show the people. Let's see it now, ladies and gentlemen, that piece of videotape on the therapy for Rick Steiner. Okay, before we go to this... <laughs> I've got Doc, you got any thoughts on Eddie Gilbert right there saying I got a Rick's real problem with I got a real problem with this because it was just four and a half months ago or five months ago that Flair broke Gilbert's nose that led to Steamboat coming in and I haven't seen any apologies. Oh yeah, yet. that's right. I forgot about that. So we just Oh, you broke my nose, okay. Well, he he's had a change of heart, and all of a sudden now Funk's a bad guy. So I'm gonna give him a pass on that. And you need to stop. You need to stop psychoanalyzing these things like they do with modern wrestling, and just enjoy it, okay? Oh, thank, thanks, pal. You're welcome. Just letting you know. You know, stop being woke, like Harper says, and yeah, take a nap. Get over it. Yeah, get over. You want it. me to call somebody an N or something? Stop being woke. It is house, you... Christopher Columbus. He was a good man. No, in this quoting. house we celebrate Christopher Columbus. No, he's <laughs> quoting Sopranos. Um, Doc, go jump off a bridge or something. Uh, Harper, you got anything from Eddie right there before we go to this ridiculous scene with Rick Steiner? I, I would have liked it if if sometime during a promo he would have took the sunglasses off. Doc, you got any thoughts Tom. on that? Stop sucking we analyzing it because Mike doesn't. I'm just like saying. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad, but I just wish you would have kind of when he said, you know, a kind of, you know, a, a what he how said. How much easier? Okay, so but how much easier must it have been to cut promos back in the day when your yellow egg sucking dog got over than if you had to do it today? Yeah, I think it was easier back then because you didn't have to worry about people dissecting everything and googling this and googling people that. People like us. Like yeah, that. it was easier. Yeah, because you saw it once and it was over with. Yeah, you couldn't replay it a million times. Right, and people couldn't people couldn't retweet it. Mm, I mean, like like exactly. we make we make fun of Tim Horner's promos from Smokey, but at the end of the day, when he cut those, they were just sitting on somebody's VHS tape somewhere, and they weren't being shared with the world. They weren't replayed over and over again like we did on the show right. all those years. Um. I blame, now it I blame you for that. You got a real personal issue with Tim Horner that started to border on your issue with Tommy Rich. I have no clue what you're talking about, but if you go to our YouTube channel, the Tim Horner, us reviewing the Tim Horner, Mr. Warndorf promo um, is there and it's fantastic. That's all I'm going to say. Somebody commented it wasn't that bad and I followed up and said, thanks, Tim. Because oh, only no. only Tim could say that it was not that bad, and <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's fabulous. But um, all right, Hopper, I hear you. Not to take the sunglasses off. Now, with all that said, we do need to go to a piece of video footage uh. with Scott and Rick Steiner and the doctor, Doctor Patrick Harvey. Um, I guess is going to talk about uh, Rick's injury, and I got something to say when it's done. Here it is. Hello, my name is Dr. Patrick Harvey, and you know Rick Steiner here. Hello. Okay, can you lay back a little bit for me, Rick? Now, as you can see from the underside of Rick's arm, he has quite a bit of hemorrhaging there. He ruptured the bicep, and he ruptured it down a long way. It's sort of like taking a chicken breast and splitting it open like so. What I'm going to do right now is one of a few therapies I do on Rick. It's called electric muscle stim. And the reason <laughs> I'm doing it is so that Rick's bicep doesn't atrophy too much so that he can get back to the ring as soon as possible. Okay, thank you. Rick's a pretty helpful guy when it comes to therapy. Though I had to order a special band so it's big enough to get around his arm. Oh, come on, dog. Yeah. Okay. As I turn this up, you'll start to see Rick's arm start to jump a little bit. You shot me? Oh, uh, you bet. You shot me? <laughs> okay. You tell me when it gets high enough. As you can see, 
It's got to it starts to jump shot. around involuntarily. Okay. I usually leave that on for about 10 minutes or so. And then after that, I take it off and I put on this coupling gel here. I usually give it to Rick because he likes to put it on himself. Yeah, That's like his to, favorite like part. part. Like okay. The, <laughs> the ultrasound. He's cranking it. Yes. The ultrasound here will increase stimulation and blood flow down to the biceps. This way we don't have to wait the normal, say, two months or so for it to heal up. I'm hoping to get him back in the ring I say, in about the beginning of June. He's doing real well so far. He's actually a little bit ahead of time, as far as I'm concerned. He goes down to the gym even though I tell him not to. Right? You ain't mad at me though, are you, Doc? Nah, I couldn't be yeah, mad at you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay. Hey, Scotty. Yeah. Scotty, look at my arm. What do you think? I'm almost done, ain't I? Yeah. Well, I figure about two more weeks of this, Rick, and you should be in real good shape. Thanks, Doc. No problem. I don't like this. Let's leave it out for all day. If you tear your bicep, you're not coming back in two weeks. But, hey, it's best back then we didn't know that. So, anyway, uh, why is Rick Steiner cranking off the gel that the doctor gave him? I got that question. Doc, did you uh, have any thoughts on this uh, therapy session? You know why we know he's probably not a real doctor? He was too natural with that. Yeah. And, um, I don't know, these doctors nowadays, they're not doing therapy, too. They got a therapist for that. This was 30 years ago. Yeah. Doctors doctors still had to work. <laughs> yeah. You can see the cars uh, going by on the road outside through the window. I was like, so we're in a strip mall or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, you think there's about... a fucking McDonald's across the street. <laughs> uh, he was just cranking it like Javorski does. I know that much. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, um, Hopper, you had any thoughts on that? Yeah, he says, he says he says yeah, his bicep ripped like a like ripped apart a chicken breast. I'm thinking that sounds pretty bad. <laughs> right, enough where he's not coming back in two weeks. Yeah, that sounds pretty fucking rough. <laughs> He just put the little thing on his arm and just, all right, let's, okay. Well, he weeks. also didn't have it plugged in. Rick had to, like, plug it in for him. Right. <laughs> uh, he looked like he was trying to, he looked like he was trying to crank it like, like Javorski does on a slick. It probably was. Anyway, on the what? On the slick. Nothing, Doc. It's over your head. Okay, we'll keep moving. I, I don't know what to think about it. I thought it was Steiner's shoulder. I didn't know it was bicep, but I guess it's his bicep now. But, you know, it is what it is. Here we got Scott Steiner and Missy Hyatt coming out. Mm, uh, come here, girl. My little southern belle. Scott defeats Tom Branch pretty damn quickly. And then Eddie Gilbert. I'm sorry. Um, Sullivan comes to the ring and is about to attack Scott, but... Eddie Gilbert says, nah, Brad, you ain't doing that. Doc, any thoughts on this? Okay, Doc disappeared or put himself on mute. Hopper, you got any thoughts on this match? This is a short match. So when are we going to see, see the Frankensteiner? I don't think they break out the... I don't think he breaks out the Frankensteiner for a while. Oh. Yeah, I was trying to... I, I don't... Uh, yeah, it's it's no time soon. It, when I say no time soon, no time within the next two to three months that I recall. But, you know, I'm, I may be wrong. Doc, are you back yet? All right, he seems to have disappeared because he's showing on this call. Okay, so after that, we go to a video package and we see the first signs of Flying Brian Pillman. That's right. Pillman is now here. Uh, I don't know what this dubbed over music is that the network has dubbed over this uh, with. But, Hopper, I can tell you who the what music it is it is dubbing out. And you are going to laugh. What's that? Remember that song? song? Oh, yeah. Doom, doom, doom. Jump, jump. From fucking Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Yes, the 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 uh, group, the group I believe is Yellow, and um, the song is Oh Yeah. Man, he looks great, huh? Dude, he looks tremendous. Was he a, a lineman when he played football? 
Um, I thought he was a linebacker. I mean, but but I'm trying to think. Not he just seems that. too. He seems too small for. I don't know. I guess he could have been a linebacker. Small. He does seem small. Hold on. Let me. Let yeah. Me um. Let me tell Doc. Hang up. We'll call him back. I'm here. Oh. Okay. I don't, yeah, I don't know what happened. They just said call back in. So I was like, "What's up?" Yeah. Um. I don't know what happened either. He just disappeared. Uh, while, while I'm looking up Pillman, um, what what did you think about the the video package? If anything? of Pillman, yeah, it looked like a homo pornography. If you that's nice, know. but What's man, wrong, I'm a, what it did. But man, Pillman, hey, you can't argue with this. Pillman is a hell of a talent. Pillman is a ph- phenomenal wrestler. Hellified talent on the heels of coming off the Scott Steiner match. We now have Scott Steiner and Brian Pillman in the territory. What an infusion of talent. I mean, we weren't sure at the time what Brian Pillman would mean, but we know what it means now. Oh, hell yeah. Um, I mean, you just got Scott Steiner and Brian Pillman in the promotion. Let's roll, pal. Uh, Doc, you agree with Hopper, like, how, how he looks? I mean, he looks tremendous. He looks like a million Jesus bucks. Christ. He's cut. He's got an eight-pack. He looks yeah. phenomenal. I mean, he he looks cut and ready to ready to roll, man. He, and, and when we say we look, he looks phenomenal, he's... He's built, but he's not like um jacked. Like he doesn't look right. like the warlord from the powers of pain or anything. He's not like roll warrior jacked. He's just in great, great shape. Uh it is is I guess what I'm what He I'm looks to say. like he looks like he's ready to play gunner on special teams for the Cincinnati Bengals. So according to his Wikipedia, I thought he was a linebacker, and maybe I'm just not remembering. Uh, according to his Wikipedia, when he was in college, he played defensive tackle. Yeah, that's now, what I'm saying. Now, um, to be what honest, D, what is that? D D three. Uh, no, he, my, Miami of Ohio. Like, yeah, that's that. that's Division one. They're in the MAC conference. Yeah, but the MAC wasn't the was they weren't a mid major powerhouse in thirty years, thirty five yeah, years ago. Though, but there's also something you're forgetting. If you go back to the '80s, when it comes to uh, football. These football players nowadays, and I'm not making this up. You can go look at football cards from back then. They were smaller. You did not have 375-pound linemen. Yeah, like you, I could have been a lineman fucking 40 years ago. Yeah, he was He was about, well, depending on what time, but he they listed him around like 5'10", 220. That, that's a... That's a decent sized human being. So I we gotta keep that, you know, keep that in mind when we talk about him and what position he played in the eighties. I mean, he he was what was it, like eighty four, eighty five was when he was in the NFL. So I mean you're you're talking a significant time ago when he played where where linemen were not as big as they are now. So there's that. Uh but I'm with Doc. This guy looks like a million bucks, bro. He and he, of course, we we know who he ends up becoming throughout the year. So it's kind of exciting to see him come in at this point. Just looking great. Um, good stuff. And it's funny when you watch him develop in the beginning. You know, we're, we're used to, you know, the loose cannon Brian Pillman. He's far from that on his early promos and whatnot. I mean, we're, we're a ways away from that. But it's still good stuff to watch him develop. Anyway, uh, Doc, what a... Did you hear when I said the song that they dubbed over? No. The song that played on the original and not the network is Oh Yeah. Doom, doom, doom. Doom, boom. Ferris, Ferris Bueller, right? Yes. Yeah, the, the, the group. I had to look it up. The group is yellow. I had no clue. I knew the song, but I was like, who the hell is that? I had to look it up. So anyway. Well, the eggs, that's that's well, what they played. Egg sucking dogs too. What? Nothing. Exactly. Nothing. Jesus. What? Extra See? points for if you know what song Pillman comes out to though when he like 
in the next couple of weeks when he actually wrestles. Mm-hmm. Y'all don't know that though. I'm gonna I give y'all a hint. Is. I believe it's Def Leppard. Lep bleh, Def uh, Leppard. Def what? Huh? Who? Fuck the heat. You're an impaired big cat, aka Def Leppard. <laughs> y'all are assholes. <laughs> Doc, any other thoughts on Pillman now that he's in the territory? I'm exci- I mean, how could we be anything but excited here? The future is, is to use a late 80s song title, The Future's So Bright, We Have to Wear Shades. Remember That's that right, song, Harbor? Yep. Mike does it. I sure don't. Yeah. But i tell you what I do remember is uh, the party patrol, Johnny and Davey Rich coming in yeah. Saturday night. <laughs> Let's go to that quick bit of audio right now. Here it is. Fans of World Championship Wrestling, Jim Ross back with you here at ringside. Before we see Terry Funk in action, two outstanding young athletes, Johnny and Davey Rich, they're a tremendous tag team. They have made a comment and a statement to all the teams entered in the World Tag Team Title Tournament. Let's hear now from the Brothers Rich. For you people that don't know, I'm Johnny Rich, and this is Davey Rich, the Rich Cousins. We call ourselves the Party Patrol, and we're tag teaming up to go on against anybody out there that wants to take us on. You know, we got here, they're having a big tag tournament going on, but you know, we got here just a little bit too late. But we still want to issue a challenge right now to the winner of that tournament that we'll take you on anytime and any place. Just give us a chance. That's right. You know, on the Music City Showdown the other day, what Terry Funk did to Ric Flair. Well, all we got to say about that is get well soon, champ. That's right. Good luck. Ladies and Let me tell you something. Oh, God. These guys are ten times better than Tommy Rich can ever dream of. I'm going to leave it at that. No, no. What you... Harper, what, do you th- what did you think of these two guys? I, it's, I thought it was Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Those are what redneck about... fucks, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at these assholes. Jesus, Hopper. Yeah, I was like, damn, yeah. <laughs> that tornado came out of nowhere and knocked off the front of my hair, but I still got it on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that hair is awful. Uh, <laughs> Both of them. Hopper, what did you shit. say? Look at these redneck fucks. Come on, I mean, bro. They sound like it. They they look like it. They're always about, we're going to go national and stop being southern. Right. I, 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 that's what I was thinking when I was watching this. <laughs> Y'all are some filthy sons of bitches, man. Y'all are foul, man. There ain't nothing wrong with Johnny and Davey Rich. What did you they do? Both, you laughed at him. They both you, they look like you could you be could, playing the fucking bass for fucking, uh, fucking, you know, Alabama. Sawyer, Sawyer Brown. Right, right, Sawyer Brown. Our fucking Confederate Railroad. Oh, no. <laughs> what the hell is, y'all are wrong. I can't believe Am y'all are. Was... Doc? Harvard has completely nailed this down he's right i mean i ain't trying to be mean but i guarantee you they're trying to go national these two guys aren't helping i can't believe you two disrespecting the name of johnny and davy rich so foul so foul what did it hey what kind of party harper what kind of party these are the party patrol what kind of party do these two guys have what's going on at their party uh drugs Budweiser, a Bush beer. Mm-hmm. Listen to Hank Williams Jr. Uh, country boy can survive. Yeah. You know that song, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, I know that song. Yeah, sure. What kind of girls are at that party? Oh, God. <laughs> Pam and, t- Pam and Pam Tammy. T- yeah, Tammy's and Becky's with the big hair. With the cigarette hanging out their fucking mouths. Wake up in the morning, passed out with one tit hanging out. Yeah. Mm, I like them. <laughs> we do. I can't believe <laughs> it was. It used to be a simpler. The world used to be a simpler place. Yeah. <sighs> Y'all are so foul. And then what when they say champs? Oh. Uh, we just want you to get better. Like, fucking Rick Flag gives a fuck about what these two assholes think. You Doc, got you, got any, you got any follow-ups? 
<laughs> he's, he's got a point there. I mean, <laughs> oh, salty Harper. Uh, unless, uh, unless, I guess, unless Rick went to Continental and the top ten was all delayed getting to the building, Rick would have never been in the ring with those two. Okay, well, let's move along since Harper wants to, to piss on these two guys, Johnny and Davey Rich, who we've got nothing against. Look We're going to go that. to Eddie Guerrero versus Terry Funk. Eddie Guerrero making his Saturday night on TBS debut in 1989 here. And let me tell you something. Eddie Guerrero had a great showing, in my opinion. Yeah. He hit some high risk moves, including a dive to the floor from the top rope. Eddie looked good. And it's easy to say now that you could see he would be a star one day, but right here he's very young. Eddie looked great. And Harper, what did you think? I I'm thinking, fuck, I didn't realize he was that small back then. Because when you see him in the in a WWE, he's a lot bigger than that. He, um, well, here, here's another piece of this. Eddie. He's, well, here's another piece of that puzzle. How old do y'all think he is right there? I don't know. 20-something years in, in his early 20s? He's 21. Damn. But, your, but there, you, your body composition is a lot different from 21 to 31. Yeah. I tell you what, though, for for only being 21, though, he he's, he's filled out well for a 21-year-old. He's not like... um. Well, you know, he's not like we, Linky. Before we get into that, Rhubarb Jones almost got his ass whooped before this match even started. Terry Funk was tired of his shit. He sure was. Okay, now let's go back to Eddie, Doc. What did you okay, have so from this? Here, here's my note about the whole match. I thought Funk was super impressive, but also super generous. I agree. And and what I figured there was the tremendous amount of respect that the Funks have for the the Guerrero family led Terry to say I'll I'll make him look I'll make Eddie look good on TV and hopefully get him a spot. I agree, and I want to point one one other thing to you. Keep in mind this was a short episode, forty three minutes, and they yet went a while. They got six minutes. Yeah, they went a while given that the, the nature of this. You know, he slapped a kid last week and sent him out of the ring. He fought with Guerrero and gave Guerrero offense. So, yeah. and, and I thought Eddie did really well, showed, you know, it's easy to look back and go, well, that's Eddie Guerrero. We didn't know that then, but he showed well for himself. Funk come at, came out of it looking still good. I don't have a timestamp, but I do want you to show funk going into the stands after he won okay yeah i'll let it play oh uh, harper what are you what are, what else you got from this this is a nice little match i'm surprised that he got nice so much shit in he got a lot of st- yeah it was a nice match and eddie like harper said he got a i agree he got a lot of stuff in i mean we're watching it and terry's beating on him right now but Eddie got that offense in, man. It wasn't. It wasn't like a. I mean, it went six minutes, so it wasn't just a complete squash. And again, I thought Eddie looked good. You can. It's easy to say once somebody's a star, you're like, yo, you can see it from back then, but you really can. I mean, he doesn't look bad. He takes good just bumps. Like, he knows just like he's everybody doing. now. Everybody now will tell you they knew that Stone Cold was or Steve Stunning Steve was going to be the biggest star ever. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. To Terry getting all hung up in the ropes. He's bumping for Eddie, though, man. Look He's at bumping. Him. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Is he was, and it's got to be out of the just Amarillo years and, and the South, Southwest, you know, in the Southwest United States, the years of working together with the Mondos and everybody else. Chavo so, Sr. So remember how old he Eddie just threw his ass up Whoa. in the fucking ring. Jesus. Bye, Eddie. What did we say uh, Funk was? 46, 45? I can't remember. What, what, 44? 44, okay. So, maybe just think about 
He's more than double Eddie's age. And Funk looks good. I just want to point that out. Yeah. I mean, he, you know, because he, his body started to kind of get a little saggy in the 90s. Not that he wasn't great and smoky in ECW. It's just it wasn't the same. Well, I think if you go, like, when you look at that. He looks spot of great top. here. Yeah, well, when you look at G- Funk, think about Funk in ECW versus Funk here. And to me, you can you can see the age there. You can see the age That's come. right. In my yep. opinion, I mean that, that's what. But I that's saw, the difference but... between forty four and forty nine. Look at yeah. Terry Funk just running ropes. Yeah. Okay, um, Doc. What did you say you wanted me to get to the uh, end of the match? You know, with that little slide underneath the ring with the double foot drop kick, always reminds me of the uh, Mexican. Oh, there he goes. Look at the brother up there. All right, let's watch the finish, and then you can. You, the brother, you know, the brother, when he hits the top of the stairs. The brother has his fist clenched, and he's ready. Like, I'll, I'll beat your white ass. I don't give a shit. <laughs> so Terry wins, and he's getting ready to go into the crowd, Doc. He narrated as it's happening. He's going up. He, oh, I'm going to go up here. Now, look at this brother. He's like, uh-uh. It's like any Friday night at the movie theaters. That's Great nice. Bro, he ain't backing up. No, nope. he never took a step back. He never moved. He's like, come your white ass on. Crack up. That's right. Beat your and ass. the problem, and, and I don't think most people understand how volatile that is because Terry, the refs game, it got Terry because Terry would have followed through with that. Yeah, because once you go out, once you cross that barrier, you got to do something. You just can't. You got to do just, something. And Terry's from the old school that you got to do something. It's one thing to That's, jack jaws from the barricade or the rope, it's one thing to do that. But once you step across it, you better go do something. That brother ain't moving. He said, nah, bruh. Come your crack ass over know, here. What, I'm going to whoop you. What I want to know is, was he joined during the match and Terry heard something and that's why he went up there? I don't know. Dude, he ain't moving. He ain't he flinching. Moved, man. That, brother, that brother was like. Try me, old, old man. man. Yeah. Come get some. Try me, white boy. <laughs> He ain't moving. Look he at was that. Like, Come on, bro. You ain't about that life, boss. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's looking at Funk is, saying. Were the referees the MVPs there to defuse that? I'll go with that. That sounds good. Because Terry, I mean, Terry Funk wasn't going to, he wasn't going to let that go. I don't uh, yeah. He wasn't. He was just gonna. He was just gonna let it happen. That was pretty good. Yeah. All right. Because I, I, I mean, think about all those tapes in, in Japan where Funk and Hanson and Brody swing chains and go in the crowd and those people scatter. Okay, let's keep moving. Uh, we got Terry Funk here on the mic, and this is my Rolex moment of the week, and I'll explain later. Here it is. I thought we might get a break here, but he did show back up. As I mentioned, fans, next week I'm going to be visiting with Ric Flair's doctor about his injury, and we'll be filing that report here next week on a program. I'm sure Ric Flair is watching this program right now, Mr. Funk. Terry Funk does wrestle. I am the best in the world. Now, as simple as minded as you are, you might be able to understand the story I am going to tell you. My daddy was a wonderful person, but he understood life more so than the executives of the NWA. You see, when I was a young lad, I had a jackass, and I loved (laughs) that jackass. But that jackass broke its leg. And when that jackass broke its leg, my father took that jackass and put a gun to that jackass's head and blew that jackass's brains out. I said, Daddy, Daddy, why did you do that to my jackass? And my daddy said, that jackass has no more place. It's useless. 
It is no more use to our operation. We can't shoot Ric Flair in the head and blow his brains out, but you, as members of the NWA, can put him out to pasture. Now is the time to put Ric Flair out to pasture. Now I know, I believe that the man wasn't injured. You say he was. Whatever the story might be or the truth might be, let's put him out to pasture and get to the top 10 contenders. Now, Rick Steiner is no longer a member. Why can't I take his position because of his injury? Who do I talk to? Who is they? Who runs the NWA? Who makes a top 10 list? Is it you, Ross? No. If it's you, Ross, Not me. I will get down on my knees and I will beg to you, Ross. I will beg to you to put me in that category because I am the best wrestler in the world today. Why can't you? And you people out there realize that, please. Fans, we, let's get the heck out of here. Doc, this is my Rolex moment of the week. I'll explain in a minute. What, I this don't is think, great. I, I don't think you have to. I mean, this is the Rolex moment of the week walking away on a phenomenal show. He does a lot of things here. First of all, just jackass this and jackass that. You could not deliver that promo today about putting a gun to a donkey's head and pulling the trigger. It's a great story. It's a great analogy to Flair, in his opinion. Then he's like, who do I, you know, he makes a point in all of the craziness. He makes a point and says, Steiner's out. Why can't I have it? Who do I need to talk to? And then he goes crazy again and starts begging Ross. What a phenomenal performance out there. Hopper, what did you think? This think is just pure fucking head. greatness, huh? Yes. This is this is fucking pro wrestling. And the thing is, look how good he looks. He looks good. He's crazy. He's articulate while he's crazy. And he's talking about crazy shit, like mm-hmm. blowing a damn donkey's brain out. This is the kind of thing that, like, my dad would stop and go, what the fuck is this? You know, that wrestling's fake, but, you know, that was a little entertaining. Yeah. I'll or, give him that. Or that wrestling's fake, but that's some bitch right there. I could hear Hawkins. That guy's out. fucking let crazy. Me, let me tell you, that wrestling's fake, but this some bitch right here, Terry Funk, that's a crazy motherfucker. Hawkins that's a crazy that redneck thing. right there. He That's a crazy sell. fucking redneck if I ever seen one. Harper's dad couldn't sell insurance by talking that way, so you be quiet. Yeah. Well, not Harper's dad, but that's 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 you know somebody out there. That was but dad. I mean, that was no. Doc's dad, Daddy Doc. He, but he was. He looks good, and and he he really. That's probably you know the the peak. You know, that 44 range for him of the last time he's going to look good, but he's got that old man wisdom that 44 gives you that 24 and 34. Don't. I've, I've seen how this world works. And he's using everything in the toolbox there. After he just pile drove Eddie Guerrero on the floor and went into the fan, went into the stand. Now he's cutting that promo. Let me point out one more thing to y'all about this that that is ironic. He's given this, he's telling this story about a jackass that his daddy shot and compares that to Flair needing to be put out the past to the pasture, right? The irony is he's saying Flair is old and needs to be put out. He's older he's than old. Flair. Shut yeah. up. <laughs> so he's saying that a guy who's, you know, I don't know how old Flair is. I'm here. looking it up. Four years. I think Flair made four, maybe four years younger than him right here. Flair's four years younger than him, and he's saying the younger guy needs to be put out and shot and put down. That's the that that actually, from a heel perspective, that's the act. Besides, actually, the way he delivered it, 
That's actually even more phenomenal and makes the promo even that much better. Doc, you said you looked it up. He's four years four years younger, yeah. There you go. He's four years younger than Flair. I mean, and, Flair is four years younger than him, and he's saying Flair needs to be put out and shot. And, and put down. I don't care if it was what year it was. You know those TBS executives, if they were watching, were like, can he say jackass that many times? Or that... Because there Somebody used to be needs counts to shoot on him? how much you could. There used to be severe counts on how much you could cuss. Yeah. Well, Terry Funk just said screw it and went into business for himself. But that great, is look, great, great work. Yeah, great. If my Rolex of the week, right there. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, and I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, Doc, anything else before we keep going? I think it's mine too, but we'll talk about it at the end. Okay, Harper. Anything else before we keep going? Nah. Lee Scott in the Enforcer, who once again has to be some kind of shot at Arn here, uh, versus Ron Simmons and Ranger Ross. The Enforcer, boy, he looks bad, but whatever. Simmons and Ross win with ease. I got nothing else from it, Doc. Do you? In the last few minutes of that match, a couple of minutes of that match, Simmons threw a body slam and a spine buster that were earth shattering. Right there. If you're watching, if you're watching Let's along, see. he made impact. Watch this, uh, he... <laughs> planted Lee Scott. Jesus, he that was impressive. Yeah. Ugh, so what at her? You know, obviously we know something's afoot with Ron Simmons, and we're ready for it. But he he looked good here. Yep, I got nothing else from it. Hopper, what about you? No, I, I'm going to be honest, I kind of fast forward to this. Is it because that they're black? It's because I saw Ranger Ross. Oh, that's true. Look at his shoulder tackle, Doc. I mean, you're talking about how it looks, but watch right here. Watch this. Yeah, he went right through him. Mm -hmm. I mean, that looked, that looked really good. It's nice and uh, this looked really good. Okay. Well, after Ross and Ranger Ross and Ron Simmons win their match, well, now we go to a video package mm. of the Dynamic Dudes. Oh, boy. Um, so here's the thing. I don't know what Let's this go. dubbed over, Harper, dubbed well, over hey, music this is. Weekend, do you, Harper, this weekend, do you want to go down to the dance studio and dance with the girls but act goofy? No, this is, this is rough, huh? Yeah. Look at this. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so let me tell y'all something as I rewind it. I know that the, the dubbed over music does this no just no justice. They dubbed over the original song on the original footage is Don't Worry Be Happy. Oh my god. They are doing that those gyrations and looking like complete buffoons to Don't Worry Be Happy. Can you believe that? This is crazy. Crazy, huh? Yes. Doc, you uh, you got any that music uh, is so bad. Don't what worry, are we be doing happy. here? What are don't we doing worry. here? Don't worry, be happy now. Do, 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 Imagine that to this. What, I don't care what year this comes out in. This is heel heat. <laughs> so pathetic. Bruh, that needs to be set to like Guns N' Roses. And they need to, well, first of all, they need to be on those skateboards, but that's been litigated everywhere in the 30 years since it happened. But man, I don't need. If we're going to market this shit to kids, don't worry, be happy ain't the way. Because you know what? I was a kid in 1989. And I hated that shit. Yeah. Don't worry. Be happy. Yeah. They, um... You know, here's what the, here's what the, let me book this territory. Here's the song they need. Harper, you're with me on this. Uh -huh. They need Skid Row, they need Skid Row, Youth Gone Wild. Yeah. That's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah, that would, that would have been more fitting for, even I know that song. That would have been. 100% more fitting fit, than Don't Worry Be Happy. It doesn't fit with them being 
day glow neon skaters, but you could figure that out a whole lot easier than don't worry, be happy. It's like they're wearing the fucking uh, TNC surf design shit. Remember that? Yeah. Yes. But uh, but even then, if you're gonna have them be surfers, have them be surfers or skaters. Don't stick them in some. Make them look like fucking idiots dancing in some. Don't dance say video. it. You almost said the fucking G word. No, no, I. He wasn't. I, I'd he wasn't rather have. Say that. No, I, I don't care about that. But they look they look ridiculous. You're making them look stupid, and they and they know they look stupid, and they look like they know they look stupid. They they look, look at really Douglas stupid. in that. Look at that. Look at Douglas in that video, and he knows he looks stupid. He's like, I I need to be a school teacher. I mean, look at that opening scene. Okay, they they got the skateboards right here, and then watch. Right, they look like a. They look like a. Yeah, they look like, say it. Not right there. Look, look at look yeah, at right Douglas. Look, 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 look at that. Okay, guys. Okay, keep going. Keep going. Okay, good. That one right there. That's the one right there where they're trying to dance, line dance, achy breaky art style. Jesus, Jesus Christ! <laughs> what the fuck? Meanwhile, kids are listening to Skid Row and Guns and Roses and don't want to hear this shit. So who is this for? Those guys are good enough looking dudes that the rats would have still liked them. Why are we doing this? Don't worry. Be happy. There's, a, there's a you know, every time there's a simple there's a simple thing here that at work. I always when when everybody is just talking too much, it's like, okay, hold on. What problem are we trying to solve here? It's the same thing here. Who is this marketed to? Well, that's what happens when you put a pizza executive in charge of the wrestling. This is this is terrible. They killed the hard on. Yeah. <laughs> well, some people they got a hard on from watching it. Okay. Who? Who? Um, well, Javorski, but he doesn't count. He gets one of those yeah, for everything. I mean, and, well, he's a Browns fan. Yeah, I mean he he can look at a sheetrock wall and it just boing, 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 speaking boing. of that, speaking of that, I think you need to explain dong crouton for the people. No, dong I'm not explaining crouton. it because because the people know what I'm talking about. Because if I explain it, it's going to be a free ad for that company, and I'm not giving free ads like you do. I don't know what that is to be honest. The, pe- the people know what a dong crouton is. Yeah, maybe Google it. Hopper, come on. What's I'm a Dawn a, Crouton? I'm going to text know, it to you because I'm not saying it. I'm not giving him a free ad. I'm, I'm, I'm going to Google this and see if it's on um, <laughs> Urban Dictionary. Oh, God. Oh, God. I made that up. So if oh, that's on Urban okay. Dictionary, I made that term up. So if that's on Urban Dictionary, it's completely ironic. Now, some BTT Army member is going to get that on Urban Dictionary, now that we're saying that. All right, let's go to some good stuff since uh, we've litigated how oh, wait, pathetic. Wait, 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 wait. It is on. Oh. A crouton no. is. Okay. A cr- it's a term read. for the. It, it's a term for the clitoris. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know why that. That's. Yeah. I was going to get scared. For, yeah, that doesn't. Okay. You shouldn't be munching on that. Okay. Let's just. Mm. Uh, yeah, all right. Uh, let's go to some good stuff in this episode. We got Hayes and Gordy come out, the Freebirds, and we got them versus the Row Warriors. And let me tell you go. something. This crowd is loud with the LOD chants. This is wrestling. Animal hits Gordy with a power slam that was nice. There is nothing fancy here. As I'm watching this, the only thing that would have probably made this better is we watched that Row Warriors clip earlier. From the you know hold on, the, hold on. the JC run it back run it back run it back you know I hate so when you interrupt World War is coming in the the Freebirds don't give a shit look at them they caught them coming yeah. in the ring we're nobody's fool we're gonna get them on the way in the ring this shit was hype from the get go pal so what I was about to say was can you imagine this in one of them old JCP buildings Jesus oh, Christ. The roof when it came off the building. South Carolina and let it go. Imagine 
Iron Man hit him. The Road Warriors hit the ring. The Freebirds stopped them from getting in the ring. And this mm. is in some, you know, 1,500-seat auditorium in one of the JCP towns. The fan, the look, these fans don't get. Look, you could see them on the video. They're into this. They are loving this. They the the roof, like Harper said, the roof would have came off. Roof would have came off. This is a solid match, a solid match, and this is old school greatness right here. Doc, what else you got from it? It, it is old school greatness. Um, I'm gonna tell you something here. Gordy and and I had this written down before today. A Gordian animal squaring off in the ring is something. That is, they, that's something special. I mean, two big dudes that are as good as those two big dudes are. I, that was great. Um, Gordy, Gordy, here comes that. Twi- yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You I were mean, saying Gordy's what? No, Gordy's twenty-eight right there. <sighs> and I mean, just here he comes, big man. Big man, nowhere to go. Nobody's backing down. Nobody's taking a step back. Free TV. This is main event quality. This is wrestling. Mm -hmm. I mean, Hawks trying to intimidate him from the outside. They're moving a little bit faster than they would have on TV five years before that. But other than that, who cares? God, look how fast Gordy was hitting. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Look at that power slam. Animal power slams Gordy, and the fans go nuts. Nowadays, these two guys would be Otis. Which is sad, but double clothesline bump. Oh, look, when he throws that clothesline, and when he ducks it, it's done so perfect. Yep. Yes. The other little thing about this match that I thought was great was when this SST comes out and starts jumping the Road Warriors, Gordy's trying to get out of the ring and go get in the fight, and Hayes is trying to keep him in the rings to get the count out. It's the little things that matter. That's a good point that you make right there because Hayes had his eye on the big prize, which is the world titles. So Hayes is like, look, Gordy, I know you want to, I know you want to brawl because that's what you do, but I got to keep you in here so we can win the, so we can have a chance at going after those NWA world tag team titles. So like psychologically, it made all the sense in the world. And that's what made this great. This was, this was, and, this was good stuff. And the last world champions, if you will, are now out of the tournament in the first round. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Hmm. And, and hold on. As you say that it was done right. They didn't get eliminated on some bull. Like, I guess, I guess you could be like, oh, well, you know, this is kind of, you know, they, they should have been more focused. I don't know. I mean, nowadays people would overanalyze this. But in my eyes, the Freebirds aren't like, you know, chopped liver to be left in the tournament. Fuck no. So I don't know. They are. Hayes and Gordy you know, did some shit. Yeah, it all works for me. Like, you know, it just it just works, man. I, this is all like the only as I watch this big boot to Gordy right there. Gordy bumps as I watch this. I'm telling you, I, you know, I hate saying the only thing that would have made it better, but again, the only thing that would have made it better is if they were in one of those old JCP towns and in, in the 1500 to 2000 uh, person auditorium. That, that That's the only thing because the crowd, the LOD chants are loud, they're into this thing. This is it's just wrestling, man. I had no other way to put it. You know, we just we just saw that stupid dynamic dudes video package. Well, they yeah. recovered nicely. They recovered nicely by going to this match. This is, and the, and I mean, the, they they the recovered have, nicely. And the, the dudes have no place in this. Oh hell no, they no place. This is this is grown folks table at Thanksgiving. Um, the way like Doc just said, the way the match ends up ending is the 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 row warriors are counted out because they're on the outside slugging away with the SST. And Michael Hayes is grabbing Gordy and telling him to stay in the ring. And uh, I believe it's Nick Patrick counts the Rural Warriors out. And the Freebirds end up winning by count out. Uh, look, I'm good. This is good stuff. Yeah, this, yeah that's good because it, they didn't beat him. Yep, they didn't beat him. There's a brawl. There's the other thing. They didn't beat him, and there's a brawl on the outside. Right. 
Eh, uh, look, I'm good, man. <laughs> the only thing I wish, the other thing, I wish they just would have went off air like this, man. That's the other thing. Just go off Once air. Once again, they, they messed this up. This should have been how they went off air. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it's just something they've been doing since day one, fucking up shit like that. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, any other thoughts, Doc, before we see Teddy Long? I don't know if I'm going to play it. <laughs> That's nice. Look at Teddy Long right there. I just don't want you to. Well, he looks just terrible. Teddy but Long I, looks great. If you're not playing that, means that you don't play Norman. Then I'll be a happy man because that is worse than the the dynamic dude's video. Yeah, actually, Teddy looks ridiculous. But and I love that actually about him as I got it on there. The only reason I really wasn't going to play it is because I thought the Norman the Lunatic video was the same one, but maybe. It I mean, might as well be. It's not, but it's awful. It, yeah. It's just, it's just, it makes the dynamic dudes look phenomenal. Well, Teddy looks phenomenal. That's all I got. To, I mean, look at Teddy Long right there with that tuck. He looks like the same suit that we saw in your prom, bit, prom yeah. picture that we got out of you. <laughs> Teddy Long looks phenomenal right there. <laughs> Anyway, Teddy does some yapping. He looks utterly ridiculous. I really was distracted by the outfit in a great way. He throws it to the Norm of the Lunatic video package again. I truly got nothing from it. It's like Doc said. I, I, I'm not trying to bury Norm the Lunatic, but it's just dumb. It's dumb. It's just dumb. Doc, any other thoughts before we keep moving? There's so many... It, the real problem here in 1989 is there's so many good things to get excited about and to build upon and they gravitate towards the ones that suck. Harper, what do you think? Yeah. What Doc said. I said that at the beginning of 89. Yeah. I mean, I these like, shows are, <laughs> these shows are great, but you can see how they're ruining their business. Right. Yeah. I, I said at the beginning of 89, I was like, there's some really, really good stuff, and then there's some stuff that you're like, "What the hell is that? Why would they put this?" Yeah, thing? like this. <laughs> Here we go. Look at Norman. He looks just as. But it's not is... what he looks like. It. This is. I want to know who said this is a great idea. Jim Hart. Right. Yeah, and a bunch of. A bunch and they of saw this doing. video and says, "Yeah, this is good shit. We need to put this on yeah. national television." If you're going to do it, let it be Eugene, because Eugene was talented. Oh, but, bro, bro, the yeah. other bad part is, yeah, uh, let me let me, let me, let me me throw this out at y'all, too, as we're, we're running uh, kind of long tonight. I think Teddy Long ends up being the manager of Doom, and yet he's out here promoting Norman. Right. Yeah. He's got a rap. He's got something. The polar opposite here of of that is amazing and i think god i was watching it like a year, six months ago or so just wait till norman's like uh tagging with abdullah oh god <laughs> wow uh, jesus christ yeah jesus christ is right all right so we go from norman and whatever that was to Butch Reed, who defeats Cougar J. Uh, Teddy Long is out there again taking notes and watching Butch Reed, who wins. Doc, anything from this match? Uh, Cougar J went flying for Butch at one point outside the ring. But other than that, yeah, not really. Um, right there with you. Harper, anything from you? No, I don't understand. I, why is all this happening after <laughs> the Road Warriors? I know. I know. Why is this still going on? Right. Yeah, I can't answer that, Hopper. It should have gone off the air at the brawl. Yeah. We'll see you next week. It's breaking down. We'll see yeah. you next week. I guarantee you Jim Ross wanted that wanted this to go off air like that. Because see that's that's how they did it in UWF in Mid South towards the end before Mid South became UWF. It's breaking down. We'll have to see you next week. Because and here's the thing. The, the match had already been decided. So you could have kept brawling and then been like, oh, we'll see you next week. We got to go off air. But that leaves it to your imagination. Like, damn, what the hell went off? What the hell would happen yep. when they went off air? I don't know. And you can you start, ne and you can start next week with after we went off the air, X, Y, Z happened. 
Yeah, because that was the hook. Cougar J just flew out of the ring face first. It was amazing. Um, but anyway, Butch Reed wins. We then go to the close of the show. JR closes out, reminds us that we will hear from Flair next week. I can't remember if we actually hear from him or not, but uh, he teases us with that hook. But I'm with you all. Man, it would have been nice going off air with what we saw with the Warriors, the SST, and the Freebirds. And on that note, before we uh, wrap this show up, we do have to do, we, I know we said some Rolexes already, but we got to Rolex it and rate this thing. Before we do so, I want to remind you, Consider becoming a patron. It's tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. That's tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. A great way to support this show. Look, Steven Javorski says I beg every week. Yeah, I am begging. You know why? Because we don't do ads and we're not selling ads. We're not selling dong croutons. We're not trying to sell you uh, gold tip roses. That is a complete waste of money. None oh, of that God. stuff. We're not, we're not shilling bull crap that you don't need or want. So, in return, I ask that you kindly consider, since this is an ad-free show, becoming a patron at tinyurl.com slash patreonbtt. Again, it's tinyurl.com slash patreonbtt. Doc, or on that note... Or maybe use the Amazon link. I don't know. I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that one in a second. But uh, so, when you, so when you buy your dong croutons, we'll get a piece of that. Well, there you go. Um, or anything gold else tip fucking want. roses. That's Jesus right. Christ. Gold tip roses. That's classy. That's yeah, that's I, nothing says white trash more than that. <laughs> Doc, I gave my Rolex to Funk earlier. Who are you giving yours to? Here's the thing. I really wanted to give it to Terry Gordy because he's Terry Gordy, but I, there's no way it doesn't go to Funk. I can understand you saying that. Hopper, yeah. what about you? I mean, Funk gets some more Rolexes. Well deserved. He wants to put yes. a guy who is four years younger to him out to pasture now, and shoot him. If that brother in the stands would have taken a step forward instead of just standing there, he would have got the Rolex. <laughs> I would have loved to see what the fuck would have happened. I do too. Like for real. <laughs> Maybe They'd have been brawling. This episode, Maybe this, that's why this episode was 40 minutes long. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Okay, uh, so we all gave it to Funk. No surprise there, even though Gordy was a worthy contender in his match with the Real Warriors. Doc, uh, you've been and, telling uh, me... And, and this, and this. On this night, I think we should all give the honorary Rolex to Animal. Yes. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I'm down with that. Honorary okay. to Animal. That's right. R.I.P. Animal. Doc is pouring out the mango truly. Or a white claw? Uh, to, uh, no, 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 no. I, I'm I'm drinking a longboard island lager. So the like Kona, I was the Kona yeah. Brewing Company. If y'all want to sponsor us, get in touch. So like I was saying, Doc is drinking or pouring out a mango truly or a um, a white claw. That's that that's for you, uh, Mikey and DFW. And uh, Harper's over there sipping on some. Um, some uh, what do you? What's the beer you drink, Hopper? Michelin. Rolling Rock, Bud Light Lime. Yeah, I drink Rolling Rock. So Hopper poured out some Rolling Rock for Animal, and I'm gonna pour out some Hennessy. R.I.P. Animal, you do get the honorary Rolex. Now on that note, uh, please use our Amazon referral link. It's tinyurl.com/bttamazon. A great way to support this show without spending anything extra. If you're already shopping on Amazon, please use it. Again, it's tinyurl.com slash BTT Amazon. Give that links to the wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, side pieces, whatever you have in your life. Tell them to use it. Do like our friend JBL Objective on Twitter said a couple weeks back. And um, actually physically take your wife or girlfriend or boyfriend's fingers and type in tinyurl.com slash BTT Amazon because we know... Uh, our significant others never take directions well. And on that note, we do need to rate this. I'm going A+. plus. We saw some stupidity, but I'm going to give it an A+. plus. Doc, what about you? I really struggle with this one because it's so good, and it's 40 minutes. And then there's a, two things that just hurt me to no end, which is the, the, the dudes and the Norman thing. And I was like, oh, how do I dock it? For that but you know at the end of the day i'm not gonna let those two things ruin my my, my joy i'm not gonna let it ruin my joy so i'm gonna give it an a plus all right harper what you giving it it was an a plus it was perfect this, this has to it be it was a first. not perfect 
It was well, not. I mean, yeah, I mean, it was forty minutes long. I guarantee you the Christmas episode were Flair and Garvin, and we both, we all three gave it a plus. No, well, maybe not a first, but it's a rarity that we all give it the same exact rating and all gave the same Rolex to the same hey, person. If this been, a, if this was an hour and fifteen minutes, it would have been an A. Yeah. <laughs> Spoken like a true 45, 46 year old who's got things to do in his life. No, no, no. It would have been because you <laughs> wasted my time with the dudes and Norman. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true, too. God, the dudes and Norman. Jesus Lord. Oh, boy. Is it any wonder that Shane Douglas is bitter? <laughs> Dude, he, uh, he's bitter. But... <laughs> maybe he has a maybe he has a good reason. That that I mean that franchise gimmick was was great and you you're right you look at the dudes and it's like what the hell were they doing with him I've said it for years the franchise and Raven were the two best guys in ECW hands down Yeah that franchise gimmick was something else All right on that cut, note cut the fucking music <laughs> so great <laughs> uh, <laughs> On that note, uh, let me uh, take care of some business. Shout out to our Vantage Point, the Retro Wrestling Podcast with Joe Morata and Michael Quinn. The northern version of BTT, slightly classier, a little bit more professional, but still fun nonetheless. They support us, so please support them as they cover the northeast side of things on Classic Wrestling. Again, that's our Vantage Point. Just search for them wherever you get your podcast from. And shout out to the Bottom Line Cast with Mike Pru and JV. They do our ECW show on our patreon feed they also do the bottom line cast which covers the career of stone cold steve austin so wait subscribe to them and check them out as well we have a we have an ecw show boy you're an idiot on that note doc is drunk he's uh drinking uh mixing mango truly and white claw i guess because he's acting like he doesn't know about a show that's been around for nearly two years now okay Doc, anything else before we get out of here? Uh, go cow, uh, go Cowboys. Let's be great. Whatever. <laughs> Let's be great. <laughs> uh, let me tell y'all. Doc is deadly afraid of Russell Wilson. He fears him maybe more than any player in the NFL. He no, won't no, admit no, no, it. No. He no, won't no, admit it, but he no, fears no, him. I, I, I'll call it straight down the middle. Stop telling lies. I respect Russell Wilson and everything he does. I fear Aaron Rodgers because he has a pact with the devil to hurt the Cowboys. But we're gonna go, we're gonna go take care of business. It's all right. Mm, fifteen amazing. and one. Oh, now it's fifteen and one. Well, we have we gotta we gotta take all data that we have and make a intelligent prediction. What happened? You were there with no. you were there with me on Sunday, and you saw. You know, you knew I never lost faith in the team. <laughs> Uh, for the record, I was in a, a text with uh, Doc and, and one of his buddies. Huh? I won't say his name. And you should have you should have heard the, the, the group text, the panic in their voices through the text, how they were just, they just saw 0-2 and, and how pathetic it was. And, and they, then the Falcons were the Falcons. The Falcons did the Falcons. <laughs> All they had to do was jump on the fucking ball, bro. Bro, they hey, just Harper. watched the ball roll. They, but they were like, so, but the, that's the kind of shit that happens in maybe like a junior high game or something. These are these are fucking multi million dollar football players that play Division <laughs> One college football, coached by the best. Of, they, they, they're, no, 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 no. Harper, I want to ask you, how does that coach? I want to know how Dan Quinn of Atlanta keeps his job. And it takes so many people wanted him. He lost a four touchdown lead in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And then this happens. Uh, Doc, tell yeah. I, I texted Doc when it was like twenty to nothing. I was like, bruh, Atlanta loves blowing big leads. I would just just sit tight and not worry too much. And he was like, This is him and his buddy. This is pathetic. You gotta be shitting me. Bro, they were all worked into a lather. And at the end of the I said, I told y'all. <laughs> I told y'all I've seen this before. Yeah. They were in disbelief, but I was like, eh, eh, you know, we've seen this chapter before of, of this book. Hey, hey, you never apologize for winning in the NFL. 15 and one on the way. 15 and one Super Bowl suck it, right? Okay. I got it. Suck All it, right. Suck it. On that note, 
Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. So I'm gonna throw it to uh, throw it to Hopper. You got anything else, or uh, can you hit the tagline for us? Let's let's roll, damn it. All right, man, hit the tagline.